Good evening, everybody. Elizabeth Diamond here, and you're reached the Diamond Network. And you know why? Because your heart is shining like a diamond, and you were drawn here. So keep shining, and you'll shine brighter as you come and check out the Diamond Network. Uh, we have shows Monday through Thursday, 7.30 p.m. Central. Wednesdays, it's an hour later, 8.30 p.m. Central. Check it out on Diamond's blog. Diamonds with an S, forever, 31.blogspot.com. Have lots of YouTubes and the links there and the donation button. Please donate energy and kind if you're listening to shows and enjoying them and growing from them. So with that, this is the new show, Voices from the Alternative World. We're going to talk about environmental, organic, and other subjects tonight. It's going to be a great show. Before that, we introduce Dale and Sunny. Let me give it to Candy Shop Candy. Take it away. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, Elizabeth. It's just great to be have my Candy Shop show on Wednesday nights as part of the Diamond Network. We start an hour later at uh, this same number, and um, gosh, we are uh, we're going to have another great show this evening, uh, like we did last Monday night. Last night was uh, Christopher Jacobs Stevens Stephen Jacobs uh, as our guest uh, speaker, and um, we um, we talked about a lot of spiritual ideas and and helping uh, folks in Australia and around the world. And we often um, I share a uh, candy jar segment and talk about uh, spiritual practices uh, from my farm here where we do a lot of of morning uh, outdoor exercises. We like to drink the dew uh, because we're here in the Ozarks and we are blessed by by rain. And and we we like to think about the the events that are happening in our world in 2015 and what might be happening behind the scenes. And so a lot of the folks on the Diamond Network, as Elizabeth uh, has just mentioned, we like to listen to Benjamin Fulford. And uh, it's uh, it's exciting what he had to say on his YouTube channel last night uh, and uh, gives us behind the scenes about, like, you know, who really shot down the Russian airliner and um, what's really going on in the elections. Well, um, I want to... uh, um, I'm really interested in the environment, and that's why I I moved the countryside. Uh, I left California a long time ago and moved to the countryside to uh, raise my children. And um, I'm anxious to hear more about uh, a, a leader in, in these uh, kind of uh, natural ways of, of living. I'm so glad that uh, that I um, home birthed and homeschooled my children without vaccinations. And uh, uh, today they say, Mom, it sure never hurt us not to have vaccinations. So anyway, uh, this uh, is a few t- ideas that uh, we like to talk about on the Diamond Network that's outside of the mainstream, and I want to um, turn it over to my good friend who I've visited in my original town of Long Beach, California, Dale. Uh, what you got for us tonight? Um, hello, Candy, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. I, I just, uh, you know, it, it, it's really funny, Candy, because Lance, uh, when Lance uh, uh, offer, gave his uh, just a question or suggestion or his, his uh, feeling and, and thoughts. I, I, I it really resonated with me because in the final analysis in today's world, the question comes to each individual: What 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 do I do to to change all of this? I mean, gosh, they've got the Pentagon and they got the Russia and they got this and they got Wall Street and they got presidents and they got political parties and they got money and what what part do I play in this? How can I make a difference? And here's where, here's the, the, the issue here that you have to remember that 
everything in the world is as it is because that's what we want. And we think we think that, that, that there's some out thing out there that's going to change conditions for us. And what the essence of this, this of his existence is that this universe is here to serve us and give us what we will. So the primary thing that you that each individual has to ask themselves, no matter where they are, is what they have to examine themselves and find out. Well, what is it that I want? And you know, oddly enough, some come to the conclusion: Well, I like things just the way they are. Well, then it's a simple matter, you know. Pick your political party and elect your candidate of choice. I mean, it's a, uh, it's the status quo, and if that works for you, that's fine, because that's the path. It's it's the essence of this universe is all paths lead to Rome, and it really doesn't make any difference which one you choose. Eventually, you're going to get there in some fashion. So the the, the critical point is you change the world by what you think. And what you do, and if your choice is well, I, 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 this is not the world that I want. I don't want violence, and I don't want, you know, all this conflict, and I want everybody to get along with each other. Then, then, then your choice is well, what do I do? And then the natural, the thing is, is uh, this is where believing, thinking, knowing, reasoning, and doing and acting. Is, is the responsibility of each individual for, to, to decide for themselves what their what place or station they're going to take in world and there's in the world and there is no there there is no little and big Every, everyone is equal it's, it's a matter of making a decision and if you decide that, that your you, that your nonviolence is what resonates with you then then take the first step. You know, and, and say, well, what is it that I can do uh, without without being violent to to create a better world? And and then there's going to be a library of thoughts that that go through your mind, and there's going to be thousands of them. And just just grab one and get on the path. You know, and then then by your thoughts and by your behavior, you in fact are going to be uh, an instrument of change. And 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 the universe, the creator, is going to serve you because that's what you want. Just like he serves a guy that, that believes that this is good, he's going to, you know, if he wants to become general of an army and get involved in a war in Iraq, that, that can be his path, you know. And so, and that's really what the, the message that I have for everyone tonight. We are the answer that we've been looking for. And, and, and to, if you... If you want to make a change, you have to be that change, and you have to, uh, you know, you have to believe in it. You have to think about it. You have to reason about it, and and then you, you know, and then you do, you know. So, um, and this is this is fundamental to to everything, you know, the the, the gestalt of the universe, and uh, who I am, what I am, where I'm going, and why. And uh, believing, thinking, knowing, reasoning, and then come to the point where you actually act on that thought. So I want to say, for uh, I'm on the on the side of nonviolence, and I'm I'm speaking uh, to those who who uh, feel the same way. And and if you're asking yourself, what do I do? Well, just uh, pick pick a thought, you know, a good thought, a positive thought, and entertain it. And, and make it a part of you, and then figure out how you can act on it. And uh, and that's how the, the when the predominant uh, majority of the world decides is they they want a non-peaceful, I have a non-violent world, and they want to live in peace with each other, then that collective will 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 make that reality that we're all working towards. And that's that's the message. Dale, I love you. Thank you, Dale. <laughs> Well, it's a, and, and and here's here's the other thing about leadership um, that we're we have to come to the the uh, focus on the creator's ideas because if we're and then he and let that lead us that highest light you know that greatest good will come to us and that's what we all follow you know uh, and and we'll be in, we'll be in good shape. 
and that which serves the greater good of all concerned. And with that, I will I will give the law of one, which we often use on this on the Diamond Network. It just says that everything in the universe is connected, and I will begin now. We are all one. When one is harmed, all are harmed. All are harmed. When one is helped, one is all helped, are helped. All are helped. And I am one I am with one all there is. is. So therefore, mm-hmm. I ask in the name of who I am, who I am that only that which serves the greater good of all, including everything on planet Earth, all of life, happen here and now and throughout all time and space. And I give thanks that it be done, and so it is. Blessings be. Amen. Amen, Sonny. And with that, I'll uh, please introduce... uh, uh, our, our guests and uh, what we're what we're going to be about for this evening. Yes, well, I have I have an introductory talk because I knew this man very well. His name is John DeVoe Olmsted, and he was born in Southern California on March second, nineteen thirty eight, in a flood. You know, he's a Pisces, and he. Um, He had a grandfather who was a developer in in L.A., and he got very strongly moved early on in life to be an undeveloper. And this is why he called himself an undeveloper. And he, he he moved up to Northern California and began teaching in Oakland, and he's doing things in the Bay Area. And his first project, he had a vision. And that vision was to create a necklace of parks across California, eventually connected by trails. But he did indeed accomplish quite a bit of this in terms of the, the saved lands that he that he um, managed to have saved from development. And the first one was Jug Handle State Park in Mendocino County. And he, he tells such good stories. We could never tell him exactly the way he did. But he's, he told the story of how there was going to be a motel built out on, up on that, right where the park is on the coast. And the last minute, there was a snowstorm, which stopped the bulldozers, delayed the whole project, and he was able to to stop the project and create a park there. And then there was a then there was a nature center across the street which was developed with his with his inspiration which still exists. There's a lot of noise on the line that somebody needs to mute star six. Thanks. Um so he 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 did jug handle nature center and then he heard about a woman who who was disabled and wanted to wanted to have a a, car, a trail, an even trail that she could use with her wheelchair, and that was in Nevada County, where where I currently live, and where he eventually wound up living. And that trail became the Independence Trail, and it was built on old mining flumes that were re- rebuilt into wooden walkways with railings, and it was right along. It is still exists to this day, being used in a very very much appreciated part of this environment here. And it's right along the South Yuba River Canyon. So there's some beautiful views of the South Yuba River from up there. And he and his some of his former partners were responsible for the South Yuba River State Parks that are now in existence. And prior to this they were they were in danger of having development right along the river. So he was able to preserve the river and the environment around the river in these sections for the public and all to enjoy. So he he has really contributed a lot to the quality of life and the environment here in California. And he's very much an admirer of John Muir. John Muir was his inspiration. And he even looked like John Muir. I mean, the way he dressed, he wore a hat and had a beard 
and uh, wore a vest and a walking stick, and you know he looked a lot like John Muir. And he, um, so this was his inspiration. He also, his distant cousin was Frederick Wall Olmsted, who, who had the parks, did the parks in Boston and New York. So he's got a legacy in his background of, of environmentalists and park people. So I knew him in the 90s. I lived on his, his property here, not far from where I live right now, close to the Yuba Canyon, and helped him with his work as much as I could. And uh, he, uh, see, into the into the 2000s, he passed away on um, Mar- in March of 2011, and it was just a few days before the Fukushima disaster that he passed, and and just about five days after his birthday, which was March 2nd, he um, cancer took him. He had so much support. He had really very a lot of support from the community here. He was very much an individual. He did his he I'd say that he uh, had his own drum beat which he followed. <laughs> he did things in his unique way and sometimes they were very last minute kind of savings you might say of certain getting raising enough funds to pay to pay you know, certain land parcels that he had. But he always did it, you know, he always had the support. And there's some interesting things that, that I was thinking about today about his uh what was happening when he was passing. It was a very wet spring. That spring was in March. And I remember raining a lot when he was in there getting ready to make his journey into the other world. And the drought has been happening ever since then. I mean, just there may be nothing to do with it, but it's synchronistic. Well, however, it's synchronistic. And now I'm expecting that the drought will end this March, five years after he is passed into spirit. And there's another interesting thing I want to bring out since um, this show has a lot to do with the cosmos and the universe and that beyond, which is beyond Earth. Now, John is, was a very grounded person, and he was very much, he's just Mother Earth was his focus. He was very devoted to Mother Earth. But about three years before, about 2008, he became enamored by the Beatles song, Across the Universe, when he heard that NASA was beaming that song through space. And he he became very talked about it, and he just you know, latched onto that. And then he was he was also having some experiences where he was seeing behind his eyes he was seeing jewels and colors, and he was describing these these visions he was having. He he was entering another state. So. This is just, he was getting ready to take his journey across the universe. <laughs> I kind of feel at this point that that's what he was, his intuition was telling him. So with all of that in mind, I want to introduce Stephen Hine, who is a very close friend of, of John's and known him much longer than I did. And he has stories to tell, to be sure. There's so many stories connected with John. Okay, Stephen. Thanks, honey. I, are you still there? Yes, I am. Yeah, um, it's a treat to hear you and um, mm-hmm. listen to your voices and your visions. And John definitely affected all of us here who knew him. He was a powerful inspirational figure in our community. I think he, um, first off, held his vision so strongly that it inspired all of us of the unchained natural landscape. Um, I'm a land surveyor. Um, It meant a lot to me to hear the words. He spoke of a chain, meaning uh, a Gunter's chain, uh, 66 links with which the Western landscape was mapped and platted and cut up into squares, and um, John saw that clearly, 
and spoke of unchaining, undeveloping, and allowing the Mother Earth to breathe. God and his angels pretty much held that vision constantly, and he was not an evil man. He was a member of our community who was not afraid to ask for help with his vision. John would get on the telephone at 7 in the morning. Okay, sorry, excuse me. There's somebody, a moderator, that's unmuted, making noise, papers and stuff. Just star six, please, while the guest is talking. Thanks. Go ahead, hon. Okay. Yeah, he would hold that that for all of us, John calling me at 6 in the morning and ask for a ride to uh, Goat Mountain, which is uh, a 6,000-foot peak uh, where he would bring us to pull bull thistles and look for skippers and Okay, the sorry. There's somebody that's not muted. Moderator, star six. I'm making lots of noise. I hope you're by your phone. You can hear. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. We have a lot of moderators on. We're all dedicated to Diamond Network. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, and, you know, maybe that's that's his message now to all of us is to carry on his work, which he which you know, sometimes we falter in our in our concept of what's important for living and to share and to allow in the world what we can bring and what we can give. Um, as someone was speaking earlier about how you how you can make a difference as a single person in a in a world of that is the world, and um, you know when we get some guidance from our angels or someone who can allow us to um, recognize uh, those those times that we remember. John, you know, the times that I remember are not the times when I told John I had to go to work or um, continue with my routine, but they are the times when I said, okay, I will give you a ride this morning. And we would spend the day, John, with his eyes closed, counting the cracks in the highway and telling me about Allah, the Garden of Allah and uh, the palm trees and the scattered oaks and uh, the oracle oak, the hybrid between the, the black oak and the, the green, the uh, live oaks and um, the metamorphosis of the skipper and grasping the thistles barehanded. Uh, those are the days I remember and, you know, feel like made a difference. <laughs> Um, it's to me now speaking to uh, anonymous audience is uh, kind of bringing back that voice in the emptiness and what we can hear Um, I'm holding that picture in front of me of uh, owl clover studded meadow in Bear Valley in the springtime March that um, Sonny spoke of when the foothills are carpet blazing color and soon to bake in the California California heat um, and then that Cash Creek gorse covered hillside and those places that just we can open up to each other and hold. Um, we don't know until we get there how much there is to lose. And it makes the work important. It's not about the trails, it's about the conservation. So I can can pass on to the next the next soul on the list. I kind of like this chain of voices. Well, that's so beautiful and poetic what you shared, Stephen. Just what the imagery that it calls forth. Is there anything more you want to say before we turn it over to Peter? 
No, I'd say go ahead, Peter. It's good to hear your voice also. Another, you know, another advantage of our um, association and memories is that we get to meet other folks along the way. Yes, well, likewise, Stephen. Uh, great to hear your voice, and Sonny. Good for you putting this together, Sonny, because, you know, we all want to keep uh, John's uh, memory alive and uh, his spirit, which... Uh, which is here alive today right now that's for sure i um when I, when I was thinking of dale um talking about the the power of one person uh you know and like stephen mentioned john was a great uh example of that because in his humble way through teaching he reached oh many thousands of people and spread this message uh, that Stephen uh, eloquently uh, described about the wonder of the natural world. And so uh, this is a perfect example of how one person can uh, make such a big difference uh, in a lot of people's lives, and uh, mine especially. Um, you know, and the other thing I like to mention about John, which is, which I always was fascinated about was beyond the actual mechanical John or the teaching John, <clears throat> there was this uh, mystical sort of spiritual John. That, you know, I mean, I, I always thought of him as a as a priest. I mean, what what is a priest? A priest is a person who uh, interprets uh, mysteries for you. And of course, John was was a a great interpreter of the natural world, and and so I thought of him as a, a, a really a, a priest and a, mo a monk because I mean if you knew anything about his private life, he he had no um, he had no uh, how would you put this, Stephen? I mean he didn't have a lot of uh, things that he commercial that he, ambition. He, well, he didn't have a lot of. Uh, personal uh, thing, things uh, that we, we would consider maybe part of life, like going to the movies or going out to dinner or s spending a little time in front of the TV or having some f so-called fun, you know. He didn't do any of that. His whole life was dedicated and focused, and it wasn't as if he was giving anything up because he got such great joy out of this focus. Yeah. And so this monk-like man who who uh, really did set a lot of wheels in motion. And now uh, Alden, I don't think, is on the phone, but his son... I'm is, here, yes. Uh, oh, you, you there, Alden? I'm here, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. Well, then we gotta we got to send it over to Alden because uh, yeah. he, he's, uh, he's one of the guys that uh, has taken over uh, for the dad and, and really will let these wheels keep rolling, you know? And so uh, maybe I'll just uh, shut up and say, hi, Alden. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm I'm good. It's, it's good to hear your voice. But no, you were, you were on a, um, you were on a little roll. I, I think you should finish what you were going to say. Well, well, I think I, I did. I mean, the, the point, the point being that this, this, this monk like man who had no personal, uh, you know, desire for for worldly goods or uh, worldly uh, kind of uh, activities, extravagances, yeah. extravagances um, was was so uh, important and so powerful to so many people, and and, and you know, and I, I and that's why I just I love to think of him as a monk, you know, as a as a real a priest like monk. I mean, like Thomas Merton or somebody like that who was really uh so focused and uh, wonderfully uh dedicated uh and 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 those who were around him uh, you know this this eked off into their life and they became that uh in in large part like a mini monk you know a monk for a day at least <laughs> so anyway but but alden uh, alden has is really uh you know, very inspiring because he's he's really he really came to understand uh, the basic 
a tenet of, of John's life and, and what it was about. And now he's uh, very quietly, like John, moving forward on a lot of these fronts, as is Stephen, to uh, make to make a lot of this vision happen, keep it alive. So, but I'd like to hear uh, Alden about your latest um, progress on the uh, trail. And I, I liked what Stephen said. It's not about the trail; it's about the conservation. You know, whereas we, we we think we're focused on this tr- active trail, which you can walk on, but the point of it is, what's around the trail? What's on both sides of the trail? So anyway, Absolutely. take it away, Alden. Uh, yeah, well, it's hard to hard to know where to start, but um, yeah, it's not. It's obviously it's not about. It was never about the a uh, trail or. One trail for dad it was about it was about what you learned while you were on the trail, and what you learned while you were in the park or while you were at Mendocino or where it didn't matter really wherever you were um it's what you were learning while you were there, I guess, and I guess that's sort of how I looked at it when I was because i I guess just this reminds me right now of. Of it, it does kind of put me back to the time when I spent the 10 months uh, cleaning out the house um, with some good friends and a lot of help, but but a large a large time by myself um, from you know May June until uh, December of uh, 2011 and early 2012. Um, and being out there at the house and without dad and yet with all of his things and um with the uh, you know the warm the warm summer days of trying to save the parks and and um getting embroiled in, in uh political things that I didn't plan on and then and then moving into the fall and and the winter of um, you know, learning about the the fireplace and uh, cutting my own wood, and I guess sort of be, sort of becoming John Olmsted for a few months at least. Um, it was obviously that was a time that I I wish I had had the energy to uh, record as much of that as I did as I recorded to make the film. Uh, but it, it was just too much at the time. But I'm sure, I'm sure I'll recall at later times. But uh, it was, it was a surreal, a uh, surreal section uh, of my life that I probably, probably have filed away in a cabinet. Just, to, just like there were so many cabinets that I, that I opened up and learned about during those months and. Um, and, and so many things that I found uh, at the house and things that I learned about dad, things that I knew, things that I learned that were brand new. Um, and most of all was a lot of, a lot of quiet and a lot of, um, a lot of hearing his voice, even though his voice wasn't there. Um, and so it was, that was a definite, definitely a time that was, um, it was strange and and amazing to find you know letters <laughs> uh, notebooks thick notebooks full of um of his time at, at doing graduate work at mount baldy um you know where he would talk about waking up at five fifty in the morning and recording the the you know the flow of the creek or the the leaves that he saw or the animals that he spotted and and the pages and pages of um thick handwriting and um and so there was there was a lot of that and then there were a lot of obviously family items and things to sort through and um so anyway that was i i guess I'm reminded of that a little bit right now as we finally are getting the first uh rainfall and uh, you know I'm here in santa monica uh on a on a deck um but but it smells it smells like a fresh rain and there's actually uh, lightning in the distance and 
I guess I'm just reminded of of dad, uh, you know, like John Muir always wanted to be out in the weather, in the in the snowstorm, in the rainstorm, in the windstorm, whatever it was. Um, I had that at an early age, and obviously I didn't learn it from anyone because um, dad was was out mostly saving parks and, and securing land and, and calling people early in the morning to raise funds. Um, but but there definitely is something in the in our blood that makes us want to um, be out experiencing the um, the convulsions of this of this earth and um, and it's it's a lot bigger than we are um, but it's uh, for some reason Olmsteads I guess are um, would rather be out in it than uh, and, and 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 sitting in front of a fire. Maybe at a, later, at a later date. Uh, so, but as far as your, as far as the original question, yes, it, it is about the conservation and it is about the teaching and the education um, along the trails. And I think obviously that's, that's the biggest challenge is, um, you know, I, I do hope to finish the across California trail, although I, like everybody, I have my bumps in the road and I have my uh, life that I'm, attempting to carve out as well but but I think the conservation part of it is and the education is is part that you know that, that we have to figure out a way to pass on um, because a trail a, a trail is an opportunity and uh, dad saw the trails all the trails that he built and that he saved and that and that he didn't save and that he planned to save in the future he saw them all as opportunities, opportunities to educate people to slow down and to stop and to look around and to and to notice why, you know, why this beetle was walking across the road and, and, and the trail and why that beetle would be going at this time of day or whatever. Um, everything did have a reason and everything was connected, uh, as John Muir said, and as we know from others too. Um, and so that, I, I guess... I guess I think about dad most when I, when I smell, um, when I smell the woods, when I smell the, uh, the, the trees, when I smell something that reminds me of Mendocino, um, those are smells that will be forever associated with, with hikes and with, um, uh, you know, packing lunches and and with groups and um, whether it's whether it's the nettles that I always seem to find uh, at in Mendocino that I always seem to to find a few of them on every trip and get scraped or the um, the dry hills of of um, of Yuba River. Um, I guess the uh, I guess the smells and the and the and the quiet moments are what I. I guess think of the most, and um, but I don't know. I get, I probably got off track from what your original question was. I love that you're sharing that, Alden. I mean, it's cross forth. I can smell them myself and see all the imagery. Yeah. And you did this beautiful movie, um, My Father Who Art Who Art in Nature. About you and your dad's relationship and his journey, just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Yes, it was obviously it was. Uh, there were many things that were not filmed that I wish could have been recorded, but it, it was already long enough as it was. Um, but that was a uh, yeah, that was a a whole other experience of. Um, being with him at a time where we had we had such extremes. We had on the one extreme we we knew that he was his body was losing out and it, and the cancer was 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 winning. But on the other hand, his mind was still sharp and his um, his heart and his his um, his demeanor was getting more um, welcoming to. To being at peace with where he was at, and um, and so we had a lot of great moments of um, 
a lot of great great moments of being together and of of sharing things that we had never shared and um and so that was that those were that, that was it was a time that was obviously pretty pretty special yeah so maybe i mean i don't know how long i have tonight but i guess i don't know if anyone has any questions for for anybody probably peter or steven can handle questions as well as i can but um Well, it's just wonderful that you were all able to be here, and this, this is just this is a show that I feel lots of people should hear. There aren't that many on the live call, but many people will probably hear it afterwards because it gets gets on YouTube. Anyway, um, anybody wants to come, you know, ask any questions or make any you know comments, but we want to we really want to keep the focus. There's this beautiful imagery that's being presented here, and you're all doing it so well. And I just I'm just loving this. You know, I I can remember how it was in the last month. You know, and and how it was raining, and oh, you know, it's so poignant during those times. Of, um, people were coming to visit. I mean, I live not too far away. I used to live right on its land, but I live very close, but it's the place I live now, so I could get there pretty easily. And, yeah, it was quite a time. Yeah. And the, dog, the dogwood was in bloom. And he, and not the dogwood, I'm sorry, the magnolia. He he just loved yeah. the magnolia tree. Yeah. Yeah, it was like crowning glory. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, so, you know, um, I... I so. We're hoping to, you know, we're, we're, uh, I guess the final thing I will say is that I, I am hoping to finally do what should have been done years ago, and that's to uh, build a permanent interpretive panel uh, out at Mendocino at Jug Handle that shares a little bit about mm. about what Dad did that uh, late September in 1972. The bulldozers were stopped four different times, and it's true uh, the last time was a snowstorm, but... The first time was just with old fashioned you know calling up different people and making connections and everybody working together on it on this one day to at least get the ball rolling that one day and so the interpretive panel will hopefully focus on on just that one day in late september uh seventy two when the when the first time the bulldozer was stopped which which would have built a motel and a golf course on what is now Jug Handle State State Reserve um, out there on the Mendocino Coast. And um, so that's been approved by the state, and we're hopefully we'll, we'll build it in the next couple months, and that will be uh, finally a nice remembrance of, of Dad and, and, and other people too. But uh, the fact that people keep visiting Jug Handle, and then they a few months later they will – they will email me or they'll Google something. They'll find somehow they'll get to me and they'll, and they always seem surprised. Why is there no mention of, of what your dad did or how it was saved out there? And so that enough people kept bugging to finally, finally caused me to bug, go up the flagpole and bug the state. And, um, and fortunately they, uh, agreed very quickly. So, uh, that will be, I think a nice, a nice well, monument. To, I'm really glad. Yeah. Yeah, that reminds me that um, John, the model that he created of what he called of the carousel, the revolving carousel of saving land, uh, of taking it out of private ownership, because private ownership in- inevitably means there's going to be some kind of development uh, sooner or later. People, you know, as generations pass, people are unable to uh, protect their lands, and right. the the government or the state has proved in the long run to be a little bit better at maintaining conservation on wildland. So he would do whatever he could, beg pennies, run up credit cards, get donations for Mm -hmm. uh, private property, what was private property, be able to buy it or or get loans or somehow get title to it, eventually pay it off, and then find a public agency that could take care of it because the public is maybe wiser in the long run. Even though we um, make mistakes together, we also are able to have successes. 
<laughs> it certainly worked so far. And then when the crisis came, the California budget, and they wanted to close all these parks, uh, Alden really jumped in there and went around and put out buckets for people to donate money. And so that was just a wonderful thing. But then, then the, uh, of course, the crisis passed and parks didn't get closed, but, you know, did, did a lot of work in that regard. And our own Bridgeport State Park was in danger of being closed. And this is just a major jewel here in our area. People come to see the old covered bridge and enjoy the river and all the history connected with it. So thank you for all you've done, uh, Alden, since your dad passed away. Yeah. Really <laughs> thank you. To continue this legacy, yeah. Sure. So we'll see That's how it goes. So all of you guys, uh, Alden and Peter and Stephen, and uh, Stephen, I, I heard you mention that you were a surveyor. And uh, my background is I spent the first, uh, much early part of my life in Alaska during the 50s. And uh, the fact that the, the, the world was, to me, was a paradise and an, an edible forest. And, yeah. uh, you know, the, 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 the trails as a kid that I walked weren't made by human beings. And uh, they always led to water and they always led to food. And uh, yeah, and an abundance of food, you know, and everything everything grew in the wild. And in contrast, when I got down here to Southern California, I looked around and I, I said, "Why are all these people growing all these things that they can't eat?" <laughs> and, and you walk down the street, and well, you, you can't eat that plant, you can't eat that plant. I could think of it as a kid going to the meadows. You know, uh, uh, half the flowers uh, were full of, full of nectar, you know, and then you got the rose hips and the blackberries and the blueberries and, uh, you know, it goes on and on. I, you know, I never packed a lunch as a kid, you know, or, or took any water because I had crystal clear, grateful water. And and all of the, so the, the, the world that we've given is, is, uh, is sufficient to take care of everyone here and and rightfully so, we we definitely need to conserve and protect everything we have. But there, there's a there's a, a greater focus that, that's interested me, and that's uh, uh, late, you know, as of late. And I I met with uh, Jeffrey Lawton and, and a, at an eco conference, and that's the yes, restoration and redemption of the of the land that's been damaged, you know. And I think there's that 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 this all works together. And using uh, and it's amazing because he he uh, he really uh, put the uh, agricultural world on its ear when he when he put that fruit orchard on top of that salt dome when they told him it was impossible and uh, I, I just uh, uh, you know that the the permaculture agriculture uh, infusing that to restore these uh, re, re actually reforced the, these areas with their natural uh, and bringing it back into the natural order of things, and um, so this is, uh, you know, this is. I could, I could literally get lost in the forest, and and as a kid, uh, you know, I get hit with a snowstorm in the winter time. I I take the pine boughs and build my shelter and start a little fire, and I was, I I would, so I could have stayed there for, you know, several days without any concern. Uh, and, and and survived, you know, and uh, so it was. It was uh, 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 nature. Is, uh, that's my core. That that's the voice that's always spoken to me, over and above everything else. And uh, it's just a pleasure having you guys on the on the on the program tonight. Sure. Yeah. yeah thanks. I'm jealous of your childhood days in Alaska. It sounds like a mm-hmm. paradise for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and Dale, that's, when you when you mentioned. Mix- uh, restoration, uh, you know, one of the last uh, little talks that I heard David Brower gave, uh, give be- not long before he died, was it's not about conservation now, but it's about restoration. Mm-hmm. And that was that was his uh, main mention at that point. Yeah, bringing. Yeah, well, we bringing, have huge bringing, opportunities. Bringing what, Oh yeah, it's and and there's you know and and what's what I like the the main thing the main ingredient that I like about 
uh, Jeffrey Lyden's strategy is that, you know, give me the, the land that you don't want, that you're not trying to make a profit out of, and I'll, I'll turn that into a garden, you know. And, and uh, so we don't have to scrap over land. We just have to show the, an example of the rest, to the rest of the world and how to, how to live, you know. Don't, don't put a, 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 a stake in the ground and say this is yours, but, but learn about what, what the land is trying to tell you, and then you, it'll take care of you, you know. Yes, that's just a beautiful thing to be tuned into, be able to listen to the land. To, to just listen to nature. The land is all connected. There isn't, there's doesn't have these artificial borders that people create. It's just all connected. It's all one, as we say. The rivers flow through all the borders and out into the sea. And we're expecting them to pull much stronger again this year. We're going to have lots of rain, and we're just so grateful that the Rain has started here in California, and the snow in the Sierra. Thinking about John and his, his, his you know, he's so much, he's a Pisces, he's water, so <laughs> this water is part of his nature. And so, you know, all things in nature, of course, in balance, the fire and the water and the earth and the air. But we did ceremonies together, too. You know, I, uh, I brought in some of the seasonal ceremonies that we would do on top of the hill, this hill there, and have a few people join us. And that was really special. We did that for up until he couldn't do it anymore <laughs> when I looked over here. You know, we'd still go off and do it other places. And uh, so that was so much. There's so many memories about him, really, yep. that uh, could be shared. Yeah. You know. So yeah, there's a lot of spirituality in in the whole thing, and so much uh, connected with the, with nature, nature's beauty and bounty. So, is there anyone else on the call that would like to say anything, you know, or ask any questions or anything? Jeannie here. Yeah. Everybody's unmuted. They can just say hi. Mm-hmm. Well, it was fun joining uh, with you, uh, Sonny, and all these people who we don't yeah. know, but uh, it's all it's, we're all in it together, right? Yes, Absolutely. we are. Yes. Here we are. Thank you. It was we're inspiring. In a you not you being united, being united, being at one with going forward into a, a new time. Uh, <laughs> rebirth. <laughs> yeah. So it's a special time we're in. They're all I'm sure. I think yeah. I think I guess for me the final one, the final thing I would say is that uh, I I think it is it. it it's obviously not perfect, but it is inevitable that that people, uh, the, you know, the pendulum swings, and so, um, you know, people got obviously pushed out into the suburbs in uh, at a certain time in, in the recent years, and then and then people realized that that wasn't that that separation and closing your garage up and uh, being separated from everyone that wasn't what people were were what what worked over a long period so now people move um back you know into the urban areas and into downtown and now you obviously you can't even afford living downtown la new york or san francisco or chicago um where you you used to be able to get uh you know in the 80s or whatever you'd you'd be able to get a bargain um downtown so i think the pendulum swings and i think people you know Frederick Law Olmsted obviously and, and Dad believed that that there's a there's a a, dis, a definite and measurable um, health benefit to to your body and your your physical health as far as walking but also to your your soul and your your insides and um, to being out in nature and 
you know, here in, even in Los Angeles, the, the LA river has seen a resurgence of popularity. And now there are, there are groups that kayak down the LA river. And there's, um, I think, a, I want to say a $1.2 billion LA river restoration that just was approved uh, a few months ago. So, um, and, and there's a tension that's being put on that and people wanting more parks and more people realizing that it's, it's better to bicycle to work than to drive if they can. And so, I think it's interesting that, you know, if we stay on our on our course, um, we don't want to waste too much energy. I don't think, uh, you know, complaining about which end of the of the pendulum is on, um, which which end of the spectrum. It's it's um, I think it's best to put efforts towards um, making that opportunity for people when they do find the trail, when they do find the path, when they do find the river that we make sure that, that it's available and it's there for people when they find it. Because the truth is everyone finds it at a different part in their life. And sometimes people have kids and they realize it's time to start getting back to being outside. Sometimes when when the kids go out of the house, people realize it's it's good to start getting back outside. But everybody's got their own uh, time when they realize that, that naturally um, there's something that draws people um, to the outdoors because everything's living, everything's alive. And uh, to being around, being a living thing, you want to be around other living things. And um, so I, I guess I just hope that we can keep uh, a positive outlook on things and, and, um, and, and preserve what we've, what we've been given and the baton that we've been, um, we've been handed and, and just, you know, do what's, do what's in our own backyard, and that's all we're asked to do. We're not asked to change the whole world. We're just asked, you know, to affect the, um, our, our part of the world. So, um. mm-hmm. yes. If everybody did a little bit like that, then it would all connect and the world would okay. change, but the world is changing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So what do you guys have on well, for you, next uh, week? This is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was really, really a show to have you guys like, on the show to... I'd, Yeah. I'd like to see this broadly, um, you know, heard. You know, I think this is just an excellent presentation by all of us, and I'd like to see it really heard by lots of people. You know, we can we can certainly advertise on our Facebook page to to listen to it on the YouTube when the YouTube gets up. It's usually within a week that the YouTube gets up. But it's just a, I, I just feel really good about this what happened tonight, and I feel John's <coughs> presence, <laughs> and uh, I felt very inspired about this. Oh. I looked. I was going. Yes, yes, Elizabeth. <laughs> Oh, I just wanted to tell everybody this is a great call. And can you hear me? Oh, a yeah, great we can call. Hear you. And uh, Sonny, you got to speak. Sonny, you have to speak up a little bit more. Uh, okay, so if you're really low, people are having trouble hearing you. And oh, you, okay. we can hear I'm all. Sorry, it was all great. No, that's okay. And then uh, I just want to tell everybody, stay tuned for Thursday's show with Cynthia. I found something. We're going to uh, 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 an update of the energies that have been coming in since September and throughout on a different aspect from Franco Di Nicolo. So I want to play an expert of that. That's a treat at the beginning of Thursday's show. And Cynthia, I'm sure, will even clear, make the vision even clearer of our changes, our bodily, physical changes. And thus goes the world. So... Anything else you guys want to say? I just want to say, keep on shining, diamonds. Shine into that environment. Shine into nature. And restore with your shine. So go ahead and... Yep, thank you. No, I would just say say thanks, Sunny, for getting us us going on this. And uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch soon. And uh, and, um, Peter and Stephen will look forward to seeing you guys in the next month or two when I'm back up north. All right, can I add Yeah, I want to, I want to mention that if you guys have uh, have anything 
that that would be pertinent to uh, the the common purpose, please to prevail on us and uh, come and join the program because this is the kind of conversation that has to go on in depth for a long, long time. Yeah, it never stops. Right. Yep. Right. Sounds we, good. We okay. Talk about community, sustainable living, and all those things on this on this Tuesday show. Great. So, Anybody's yeah. welcome to join us anytime. Okay. Oh. So. Okay, Sonny. Well, Lesson thank you. Down. In the words of R. Crumb, keep on truck trucking. <laughs> yeah. yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we'll catch you guys yeah, thank next you time. Guys. Thank you all for being here. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.